we want to continue with this example to the next page where it asks us to construct a 90% confidence interval for P. It asks us to show the formula substitution and result. So when you look at the formula table, the formula box right here, I'm actually giving you two formulas, but the one on the left is really more for concept so you understand what's happening. The one on the right is, is the one that we actually want to use here because we're if we write standard error of p hat, we're just going to have to tr translate it into this other value right over here with the big square root anyway. So I'm going to write p hat plus or minus z alpha over 2. That's a subscript. You write it below the line. And then a big square root, p hat, q hat. They're multiplied, by the way, and divide by n. In math, we don't often show the dot, <laughs> but I did here because I thought it would get confusing anyway. So they are multiplied by each other. It's the standard error, right? That's the standard error for P hat formula that we learned in chapter eight. Okay, so formula is done. Hooray. Now what about the substitution, the heavy lifting here? Well, I already know what P hat is because we said so a while ago. P hat was given to us in the problem it's 0.46 right there. So everywhere there's a p hat in the formula, I can put a 0.46. So that's a 0.46 plus or minus, leave myself some space here. And that p hat right there is 0.46. And then I'm gonna multiply it by the complement of p hat, which is q hat, right? And we already figured that out, that's 0.54. And then we're going to divide by n. n was 1,293, if I'm not mistaken. I did that from memory, and I didn't look. Yes, it's right there. So n was 1,293. So that's great. And that just leaves me the z. Now, we went to all that trouble on the other page to show all this work for finding z. But you don't have to do all of that work. You just really need to figure out your alpha and your alpha over 2. See, the formula kind of tells you, use alpha over 2. So I need to know what my alpha over 2 is in order to figure out my z. Well, you do if you're using a calculator, um, an older calculator, if, or if you're using the table. If you're using the stat crunch or the new calculator, you actually can find out what it is right away. So let me show you in stat crunch. So in stat crunch, I can say, look, I want a 90%. It's a z, so the mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. And I just type 0 .90, 90, enter, and there it is right? So I know that it's 1.645. And I can put that right down, right? Because that's what it rounds to. I mean, if you want, you could do 449, but it's not required. Now, if you're on a calculator or the table, you might not have as easy a go of it. If you're on the new calculators, it's fine, because you can just say second distribution, inverse norm, and do what I just did essentially in StatCrunch. Say 0 0.90, 0 and 1, and choose center, enter, paste, and there it is, 1.645, right, if you round it. Great. But what if you have an old calculator or if you just have the table? Well, if you have an old calculator or the table, I'll write the notes over here. So old calc or table, you'll have to do a little bit of work that StatCrunch folks won't have to do. You would have to figure out alpha is the complement of this. So alpha is 0 0.10, right? Because 10% and 90% make 100%. They're complements of each other. So alpha over 2 is 0 0.05, right? So this is 10%. This is 5%, 0 0.05. And then if you're on the table, you just go to the 0 0.05 column, drop to the bottom. So here's 0 0.05. I go to the very, very, very bottom, there it is, 1.645. If I'm on the calculator, you essentially do the same thing, but with a calculator. <laughs> so let's see here. Second distribution, inverse norm, 0 0.05. And then old calculators are automatically left. That's why you have to do this. If you have a new calculator, you could just do the center thing. And you'll get, it gives it to you negative, but don't worry about that, because the negative is taken care of by the formula. So you just need the number. All right, so four different ways to find this comfort or this critical value. You can get it whichever way you like. You don't have to really do this work unless you're having an old calculator at the table. If you have a new calculator or stack crunch, you can just put this in the middle, right? 
or center, I guess I should say. So it's between on StatCrunch, it'll call it between. And then on your calculator, it says center. So StatCrunch or um, new calc. It's new. You can have new calculators that don't have it. I shouldn't really say it like that. It's, it's like a new calculator, but it's a particular operating system that it has. All right, now for the PS de resistance, we actually want to have this result. And this is a giant pain to actually put into a calculator, so we're not going to. We're just going to have StatCrunch or the calculator give it to us. Won't that be nice? All right, so we're not gonna we're not gonna type it. It's just gonna get figured out automatically. All right, let's try with StatCrunch first. So I can just close this window. I don't need to see this right now. So under stat under proportion stats, see that? I can choose one sample and I have a summary. I don't have the raw data. I don't have all the yes, no, right? Yes, I believe in ghosts. No, I don't believe in ghosts. Yes, I believe in ghosts. Yes, I believe in ghosts. I don't have the raw answers from people. I only have a summary of the answers. I know how many said or how many were sampled and I know how many I believe said they believed in ghosts. So I'm going to click with summary. And then it's going to ask me the number of successes. Ah, that's very important because we figured that out. Let me move this over so you can see. We figured that out right here. When we figured out the number that believed in ghosts right there, we were figuring out the number of successes. That's why we did it. So the number of successes was 595. Right. So if you want, you can label that right on your notes and say this is the number of successes. The calculator will need it also. And you must round it to a whole number, I can tell you that. So it was 595, and you can say round to whole number. It has to be. For both StatCrunch and the calculator, it has to be a whole number. So I'll say 595. Hold on one second. There we go. 595, and then it was 1,293 observations total. And then I'm going to click down here on confidence interval, right? See the confidence interval piece? It says confidence interval for P. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to change it to 0 0.90 because I have a 90% confidence interval here. And then I'm going to click compute. And there it is. The lower part of my confidence interval is right here. The upper part of my confidence interval is right here. And there's the standard error, in case you wanted to know, which is not actually the margin of error. The standard error is this piece right here. So if you wanted to multiply it by Z, you could do it by hand and so on. All right, so my result, if I'm going to round it, would be, let's see, 0 0.43737. I'll go with that. And 0 0.482. All right, this is going to round a little weird. 482969, that would be 48297, right? Because that 9 rounds that 6 up. Okay, that was stat crunch. What about the calculator? All right, so on the calculator, I want to come up with the same results. So if you remember, on the formula box, I actually said where to go. It's one prop Z int. But this is a new region of your calculator that you haven't spent any time in. If you press stat, and go to the right, you can go to the left or the right. So if you go to the left once or to the right twice, you can get over to tests. See this? This is where we're going to be in chapters 9, 10, and 11. And we're looking for one prop Z int. One proportion, right, single proportion, double, all this stuff with two in them, um, the two prop, the two samp, those are all chapter 11. So we'll get there. But right now we're looking at one prop Z int, which is letter A. So I choose that. And then again, it needs the number of successes, which was 595. And then it needs the total number, which is 1,293. It wants to know my confidence level, which actually was 90. So you can type either 90 or 0 0.90. It'll take it either way. And then I press calculate. It's back to another calculate. No more pasting. We're calculating. If I touch my calculator right now, it all disappears. I've had many students do that. And they're like, oh, no, where did it go? So press stat, go back to tests. It was letter A, which is actually closer to the bottom. So if you go to the up arrows and kind of work your way up there, it's all still sitting in there, and I press calculate. 
and you get the same answer that we did when we did stack crunch. 0 0.43737 or 48297. So I just wrote little calculator instructions for myself right there. So it's one prop Z in. Stack crunch actually takes a little bit more instruction to get there, but it's stat, proportion stats, one sample, all the two sample stuff is chapter 11, and with summary. We don't have the raw data here, we have a summary. So right there.